It's Thursday, January 16th, 2022. Uh, I'm gonna start by saying this today. The market was absolutely crushed today. Dow Jones down 741 points, NASDAQ down 453 points. We are now beginning to see these markets being exposed for what they are. When you pump trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars into these markets through QE, all this money printing, uh, when you have 0% interest rates for over a decade, and now we have raised rates to what, about 1.5%, and we are seeing the whole thing disintegrate because it, these markets are being exposed for what they are, very, very manipulated, weak markets. Uh, a house of cards built on top of quicksand. If we had real markets, think about it, if we had a real market, real, a real strong market right now that wasn't pumped up with trillions of, of fake fiat uh, dollars uh, and 0% and interest rates for over a decade, do you really think 1.5% would be doing the type of damage that it's doing right now? Think about it. The reason why these minimal interest rates are doing so much damage is because these are extremely weak markets. They have always been extremely weak markets ever since the last financial crisis where the Fed came in, cut rates, held rates down for way too low and pumped way too much money uh, into these markets. This is now what we get. And there is no such thing as a free lunch. There never was anything uh, uh, such thing as a free lunch. And now people are beginning to see what happens, uh, what the repercussions are when you print this amount of, of type of money, uh, this amount of money, and you keep rates at zero. We are now shocking the system. Uh, just with one and a half percent interest rates. I think that's about where we're at right now. I think the Fed's fund rate is about 1.5 percent. And, and these markets cannot handle it because they've been propped up for so long. And we've been told that the markets are so strong uh, that they're not manipulated. But look at what is happening. They are crumbling under very, very slight interest rate moves. I want to go back to something Jerome Powell said yesterday. Jerome Powell yesterday said that the consumer is in great shape. He said the consumer is spending. Yes, Mr. Powell, the consumer is spending. They are spending with credit cards, acquiring more and more debt on top of the debt that they already had. But we've had, uh, we've had a market Again, with 0% interest rates, trillions of dollars pumped in it, we closed an entire economy down, paid people to stay at home, not produce, not manufacture, not earn a paycheck. We paid people to stay at home, and now we're raising rates, and this is, this is what we're seeing. No surprise. Are you surprised? I'm certainly not surprised. I've been talking about this for a couple of years. I knew, and most of you all knew, that when you print this amount of money and keep rates this low for this long, you're going to get big trouble the minute you begin to raise rates. I said this probably eight months ago, maybe a year ago. I dare, I said I dare the Fed to start raising rates because it is going to expose these markets for what they are, a house of cards built on top of quicksand. They're not going to be able to withstand these rate hikes. And we're going to see a lot of damage because I don't see, even though this Fed is extremely, extremely weak, uh, and I think he should be raising well over one full percentage point at each meeting, uh, they are going to continue to raise rates. And even the slightest move, even if they raised rates 25 basis points at the next meeting, this is going to do horrific damage to these markets. These markets uh, are so fragile and people believe that they were more than they really are. These are extremely fragile markets. My friend Mike today, uh, sent me a message from Indiana and he uh, he's in Indiana right now with his rig uh, making some deliveries and he told me he was at six gas stations today six gas stations that had no fuel in the state of Indiana uh, ladies and gentlemen start betting against the debt this thing uh, this thing has got a long way to go and we've got a lot of debt and a lot of this has to be shaken out and I really hope, I pray that the Fed really gets aggressive and really has a change of heart and really 
really does the right thing here and begins to raise rates over one percentage point at each meeting. Now, I know they're not going to do that, but uh, they're just going to allow this thing to fester even longer, making it worse, allowing inflation to continue to climb and get ahead of it. Uh, the inflation is going to get ahead of the Fed, and the Fed needs to start getting ahead of inflation. They're not going to do that, and this is why all of us must continue to prepare financially, prepare physically, and prepare spiritually. Big things are coming, ladies and gentlemen. Um, YahooFinance.com. Consumer spending is running out of steam, and the market isn't ready for it. That's the title of the article. Now, Mr. Powell said the consumer is in great shape. Consumer is strong. I disagree. The consumer is extremely weak right now. Without the stimmies, without the extra benefit uh, checks, uh, just like the stock market, without 0% interest rates and trillions of dollars, uh, the same with the consumer. If they're not getting all the free money, they can't spend. They can't go out and buy things. And this to me means it's going to get much worse. The economy is going to get much worse. Axios, how Americans will feel the squeeze from higher interest rates. Interesting article today. Well, we know if right now, if you want a 30 year fixed mortgage uh, right now, um, you're going to pay probably close to six and a half percent if you have 20% down and if you have perfect credit, if you want a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. Uh, if you don't have perfect credit, if you don't have 20% down, you're probably gonna be paying at least seven and a half percent right now. Uh, it says here, credit card debt, average rate on a credit card right now, uh, well, going back to May, it says, and rates are probably a little higher now. Back in May, the average uh, credit card rate hit 16.7, up from 16% last year. This number is going much higher and it will squeeze consumers who carry a credit card balance. Get your cards paid off. Auto loans, average interest rate on an auto loan, 5.1% last month, up from 4.5% a year ago. Average monthly payment on a new automobile today, ladies and gentlemen, $656. Average payment on a used auto is $546. Think about that. That's the average monthly payment the average consumer is paying for an automobile right now. $656 for a new one, $546 for a used one. That's absolutely incredible. And think about insurance rates going sky high too to insure your vehicle. Fox Business, over half of Americans are dipping into savings or going into debt to cover expenses. Mr. Powell yesterday said the consumer is strong, yet I'm reading another article today telling me over half of Americans are dipping into savings or going into debt to cover expenses. I mean, connect the dots, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a trend forming right now. It's been forming, and it's telling us exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. The consumer is extremely weak, going to get weaker. The economy, extremely weak. Without the stimmies, uh, without the benefit checks, uh, you can kiss this economy goodbye. This economy has begun to collapse uh, probably, it began a couple years ago. Last year, we really saw it collapse. The only thing holding it up was all the free money. And now uh, the roosters are, are coming home. Uh, U.S. jobless claims continue to trend higher. Uh, last week, we had 229,000 people file first-time jobless claims. That was the number we got today. The week before that, the number was revised up to 232,000. And I think this is another sign that we're going to continue to see layoffs increase right here in the U.S. And this number uh, is going to continue to get bigger. Uh, another article today, why experts are warning consumers uh, why you should pay off your credit card debt sooner than later. We now have over $1.1 trillion in credit card debt. You want to pay off your credit cards right now because the credit card rates, the interest, the APR is going up. And if you carry a balance, that balance, you're going to have to pay more in interest every month on that balance. So get it paid off. If you got to pick up a side hustle, two side hustles, whatever you have to do right now, to get these debts paid down, especially credit card debt, do it right now and get it paid off. Article in the Hedge today, U.S. housing starts 
and permits collapse in May. Housing starts crashed. Get this, 14.4% month over month. Permits plunged 7% month over month. CNBC, food stamps, credit card debt, record high inflation forces some older Americans to make tough financial choices. It, this is really sad when you think about the older population and how, you know, back in the day, older people typically just kept their money in the bank. They earned a really good interest uh, on their money. And a lot of people could just live off their interest. Today, you get literally nothing on your money at, at the bank. So this has forced a lot of the older generation to take their money and gamble it into the stock market so that they could get some type of return. And the returns have been pretty good, no doubt about it. But there's a risk for that. And anybody awake and aware of what's going on, you have to think that your money in the market is literally sitting on a ticking time bomb. Yeah, it might, might have done great last year, and the year before, and the year before, but when was all, of, all this money printing and, and all the, these um, artificial injections and the 0% interest rates, when was this all gonna come to an end? Nobody really knew. And now I believe we are beginning to see the beginning of the end. Do I think the markets will rally at some point? Yes, of course. Uh, do I think that we're going to see uh, all time highs on the Dow now? No, I believe we're gonna see lower highs and lower lows. And I believe that this is the beginning now uh, of something that we have never seen before. And how long and how far this thing goes, I have no idea. We are in uncharted water, ladies and gentlemen, but getting back to this article, these older people, this older generation has had to take on a lot of risk here. And now their money is in these markets and it's getting absolutely crushed. These markets are getting pummeled. And if you're an older person and you lose out in these markets, and I saw this happen to a handful of people, older people, in 2008. Older people cannot take the, the gambles and the risk as maybe a younger person can. Because if they lose everything and they're 75 years old and they go, well, don't worry, it's all gonna come back in 10 years. Well, all right, you're 75 right now. You can't wait to 85 to recoup your money. You may not even be here. You need this money to live on. If you're 25, you don't really need this money to live on. You can gamble more, you can take more risk. But still, I mean, be responsible. But a lot of older people now are gonna be in very, very big trouble as these markets have turned. And the question is now, how far down are they going to go? How much uh, have many of these people already lost in, in, in savings uh, in these markets? Uh, and so now they're gonna have to make some, some real tough financial choices. Do they stay in or do they ride it out? Uh, a lot of people will say just ride it out, it always comes back. Again, when's it gonna come back? How far down will it go? What if it goes 50, what if we lost 50% of the Dow? 70, 80, 90, people out there might laugh and say that can never happen. Uh, it can happen, it, it, it can happen ladies and gentlemen. Bank of England hikes rates for the fifth time in a row as inflation soars. They're sitting right now at 1.25% as their inflation is 9%. So we are watching inflation globally now and nobody is really getting ahead of it. And this is uh, gonna be a global problem and nobody uh, is taking control of this. I mean, what is 1.25% gonna do when you have 9% inflation. So they're pretty much doing the same thing we're doing. Nobody wants to take control. Nobody wants to take the reins. Nobody wants to end the party. Nobody wants to be the bad guy here, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have real leadership. Uh, we don't have anybody in the central bank. We don't have anybody in the Federal Reserve that can take leadership right now. We don't have a Paul Volcker. And I, I do believe that uh, Jerome Powell is gonna continue to raise rates but these rate hikes are way too small to do any type of damage to inflation. All it's going to do is damage the economy. It's gonna damage um, your bank account. It's gonna damage your wages. Uh, it's gonna damage your standard of living. It's gonna, da it's gonna damage uh, a lot of things. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to damage what it's supposed to, and that's inflation. 
Uh, CNBC, nearly two-thirds of millennial millionaires believe U.S. economy will be stronger by the end of 2022, CNBC survey finds. Well, I believe that many of these millennial millionaires will not be millionaires by the end of 2022. That's my opinion. Uh, I want to finish up with a couple articles here. Baby formula production halted at Abbott's Michigan plant due to flooding and severe storms. So the plant has been open nine days. It's already shut down. Uh, we still have a food crisis, a food shortage. It continues to get worse. Uh, now we've got floods, we've got droughts, we've got war, you name it. And I want to close with this last article and it has more to do with the food crisis in America. I ran across a few articles last night. Many of you have probably already seen this. Uh, they are blaming heat and humidity uh, for killing at least 10,000 cattle in the state of Kansas. Uh, I don't really know uh, what killed these cattle. Uh, now it's a respiratory issue. Uh, this said it was heat. Who knows? Uh, very, very strange. But now we have 10,000 dead cattle in Kansas. Um, very odd. And it's just going to add to the food crisis. And it's going to add to food prices. You pull out 10,000 herd of cattle, what does that do to the price of beef? I'm sure, it's going to rise just on that. Um, so I, we have so much going on, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with this economy uh, financially. And we have so much going on with this food crisis and the shortage. I don't see any any end in sight. Comment down below. Is it going to get better by the end of summer? Maybe, maybe these millennials are right. Maybe it will get better. Uh, I, I hope it does. Uh, how sad. It, it, it's so sad and tragic to see. I, I, I watched a video on this last night. All these cattle just laying dead in a field. And what a waste that they're never going to feed anybody, that their life just went to waste, just died uh, with, with just no purpose, just dead. And all that food has just gone to waste. What, what a tragedy, so sad, really, really sad. Um, I don't know, this is really getting strange. Um, and I, I, I just don't know what this looks like by the end of summer, how bad it could get. Hopefully it gets better. I, I pray that it does. I don't, I don't know. It is really getting scary out there between the food, you got railroads shutting down, you got trucking companies going out of business, uh, you got empty store shelves, we, we've got, uh, we still have got trouble um, at our uh, ports here in Los Angeles. And we've got, a financial crisis on our hands and nobody seems to have the leadership or the answer to get out of this thing. Me personally, start cutting massive amounts of spending, start cutting taxes, start getting jobs back here in America, uh, open up pipelines, get people back to work. Uh, we got to do something. Uh, we can't just uh, be a country of consumers spending money we don't have. This is a terrible strategy. Uh, this will be the end of the greatest country on planet Earth. This will be the end of the U.S. economy. You can kiss it goodbye. If all we're going to all we're going to do is consume and hope and pray that the system sends us another check.